Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Wednesday, November 9, 2022. Acra has made some real progress since you last saw her. We have the entire inner skin installed, bedded in 3M5200. The keel has been sistered where it needs to be. And we just have to sand that in, but we'll wait till we get the uh, final planking on. And while we're waiting for that mahogany, we decided yesterday that it was time to begin stripping her hull sides and her transom. And the results really are rather spectacular. Uh, there is the occasional loose fastener that we have to dig out and change. And then there are one or two in along the bow. Of course, now I can't find, oh, there it is, where this has been sanded enough that uh, the plank has gotten quite thin right there. So we will back that screw out and uh, toothpick the hole and then sink the countersink a bit deeper, re-insert uh, a silicon bronze number eight by, what would you say, Joe? Inch and a quarter there? Yeah. And since this is showing through, we'll probably pop that bung as well just to be safe. But uh, we're very pleased that the stem is in great shape. And Joe, there's a hull number right here. There is. She's number 5022127. So we know that this is the original stem. Um, not everything is perfect. Uh, somebody at some point decided to make a repair here. Um, don't ever do this shortboard crap. Uh, this is a very weak spot now because this was just a little short chunk was put in. Uh, not quite sure what kind of wood was used. If I had my druthers, we'd take this. Well, this frame, this plank is pretty well eaten up. And the challenge is that we need to go clear back to here. I'm just about halfway to the transom before I get to the end of that plank. Um, well, we'll make a decision a little further down the road. And as we continue back, uh, well, Joe, why don't you talk about this, whatever this is. So at one point, um, this one plank was replaced. And believe it or not, it wasn't even hardwood that it was replaced with. It's some kind of softwood. I'm not 100% sure on what it is. And when they put the splash rail back on, uh, instead of putting bedding behind it and actually making sure that it was a good bond, they put it on and then just tried to fill it with some kind of caulk. And as you can see, it failed. And this plank is completely rotted right through. So not only is it this plank, but the one behind it, or just below it, where the rail comes onto, is already showing signs of rot. So that might be able to get a Dutchman. Otherwise, that plank might yeah, need to be replaced. Yeah, I think we're replacing that plank because yeah. it. Uh... And then around the backside here on the transom, we have the same story. Uh, there was right here. There's still some kind of epoxy. It might be in a, a resin. And they tried filling it, and when they did that, it just allowed water to get in behind the rail and rot out. So this plank is also going to have to be replaced. Yeah, yeah, you really don't want to put a short plank on the transom. Right. Well, and it's the same on the other same side. Same on the other side. So we'll be replacing this plank, possibly a plank forward on starboard side. Uh, this one 
Uh, so there was a hole here and it was the same thing. So this is gonna have to be replaced. It was just packed full of uh, resin epoxy, so. Well, at least it wasn't Bondo. Yeah, this is true. Um, but when you have a repair like that, it still allows water to get in behind it and it will just continue to rot. So we'll replace, oh, well, but the joint's right here. Right, so, so it's a short plank as well. Yeah. Now, see, we're calling this a short plank. Uh, I'll bet if we put a tape on it, we get six feet. Yeah, believe it or not, I actually already measured it. It's, all, it's actually closer to um, seven and a half feet. Aha. Uh -huh. But as you can see on the sides, there, it must have bumped into a few things here and there, but there's some red clay. Um, a few of these are really deep, so I'm going to have to be putting a Dutchman in it. Um, just because, you know, you don't want to try to sand something like that out, because other than that, it's just going to have be wicked concaved. But yeah, oh. there's another spot here. Right. And here, it's just... You don't so want to see you don't, when you're sanding it. Yeah, yeah, when you're sanding it, you don't want to try to take off wood. You want to just keep what's there and have it cleaned up. So this is uh, stripped, and then Joe went through with our Hutchins longboard pneumatic sander, which is really the only way to sand top sides, decks, and transoms. Otherwise, you get the hoop de doos if you bring out your old D8 and have at it. Um, those circular sanders just, uh, well, they, they produce moonscapes. So, we are in the process of milling out the, the bottom planking. Once we have it all ready to go, we, we will seal the inner planks with Smith's clear penetrating epoxy sealer and then be ready to begin the process of laying down the outside skin. Uh, that Those planks will be, as is the case with these, those planks will be uh, sealed with Smith's CPES on both sides, on, all, on the edges, on the ends, before they're put down. Once we have them in place, we will be using the Dannenberg uh, bath, in, bath and expand process of soaking the bottom with, with water and covering it with uh, thin plastic film, the thinnest you can get, and Dannenberg says, find the thinnest film you can get because it will lay down much more aggressively against the wood and keep it wet. So we'll keep working and we'll be back to you when uh, we've gotten past the next milestone. That's our update on Wednesday, November 9, 2022. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.